Hello everyone, welcome back to another Jurassic World Evolution 2 video and welcome to the first ever monthly recap of Jurassic World Evolution 2 news. So hello everyone, hope you're all having a fantastic day. Do consider pressing that red subscribe button and the bell notification to stay up to date on all of the news regarding Evolution 2 and other Jurassic World titles. Now for today's video, I'm going to be starting something that I was eagerly waiting for, let's say a few years. I said that if we were to ever get to Jurassic World Evolution 2, monthly recaps and news informations all the way leading up to the game's release would definitely be coming. And finally, I just about remembered it in time. <laughs> So welcome to month number one, which is the whole of June 2021 monthly news recap for Jurassic World Evolution 2. There's a lot to cover in today's news recap because it is the first ever month we got information about Evolution 2, so let's get into it. So the first bit of information was obviously the announcement of Jurassic World Evolution 2. We got a gorgeous announcement trailer and we got confirmed information that Claire Deering and Ian Malcolm, aka Bryce Dallas Howard and Jeff Goldblum are returning back to do their characters for Jurassic World Evolution 2. Now this storyline is going to be completely different, it's going to have a brand new storyline, it's following off the events after Fallen Kingdom and also staying in the evolution time frame as well. So it seems like this is going to be an entirely new different sequel. Shortly after that we got some little bit of information here and there and one of the bits of information was actually the fact that there is no juveniles at launch. I doubt they'll even be brought in later down the line either but having no juveniles and no reproductive system for the dinosaurs is kind of downheartening. However we like to be optimistic over here. We also got information that the game will only be single player so everybody asking for multiplayer unfortunately that's not going to be the case. Soon after we also got information that Camp Cretaceous content will not be in the game at launch. Whether or not this means no Aranosaurus or Monolophosaurus, or just specifically the Aranosaurus and Monolophosaurus designs, is a whole nother kettle of fish. We obviously know that maybe E750 isn't going to make it, and probably the kayaks as well aren't even going to make it. But at launch, at least, Camp Cretaceous will not be available in Evolution 2. Who knows, maybe later down the line, once the series of Camp Cretaceous does end, we'll have some DLC for the Camp Cretaceous franchise to finally pop in to Evolution 2. We also got confirmed information that there will be in fact more flying and marine reptiles rather than just Mosasaurus and Pteranodon. Not only that, but these flying and marine reptiles will also have their own animations and their own living quarters as well, such as aviaries that are customizable and also marine sensors, which I believe may even be customizable as well. These reptiles will not have looped animations like they did in Jurassic World Evolution 1, which is very, very good. After that, we came across E3 where we finally got our first ever species field guide, the Triceratops. We can see a few more animations for the Triceratops where it starts to stand off and start to fight off other di dinosaurs that are in its territory really. And literally a day later, we got Rich Newbold talking on a Twitch gaming interview saying how dynamic pack hunting will be a thing and they have looked into dinosaurs being more natural. So instead of just dinosaurs fighting in loop sequences and also just walking around the enclosure, these dinosaurs will now have pack hunting and more intelligent behaviours as confirmed by the producer of Evolution 2. And here comes the most important bit of information. Somebody working at Game Informer called Andrew Rayner actually got some gifts and a first 30 minute look at Evolution 2. He posted some gifts of the Pteranodon and Amargosaurus which was technically one of our first ever looks of the in-game footage of this game. And as you can see, the Pteranodons flying around the Avery and also the Amargosaurus walking out the hatchery do look brilliant. And then soon after, the Game Informer article reveals so much information that we kind of have to break it down in small stages here so we don't go into an over 10 minute video. So in this article, this is what was confirmed so far. The maps will be much, much bigger than Jurassic World Evolution 1's and also would spread across the entire screen. Species don't do well with each other very often depending on the habitat that you in fact build. You have to work on a balance now when it comes to dinosaurs in your enclosures. Many dinosaurs after being released from the hatchery won't just be satisfied with their habitat. They'll take some time to incorporate their habitat and walk around the enclosure and start to study it, see which area is better for them and they'll start to make territorial areas in their enclosures. So theoretically speaking, you can have a Spinosaurus and a T-Rex in the same enclosure as long as their territories don't overlap. In this article, Andrew Rayner did in fact see two Tyrannosauruses emerging from the hatchery together. We also see in the recent species field guide of the Amargosaurus that exact same mechanic happening. However, I do believe you can release up to three at one time. 
After an egg is synthesized, you can in fact tweak their social behaviors before hatching it into the wild. This means that you can make them happier when there's more dinosaurs around or less happier when there's more dinosaurs around. You can choose which eggs go to maturity and release together, similar to how we were talking about the Tyrannosaurus and Amargosaurus. The dinosaurs, after released, will study and observe the habitat before being agitated or stressed. As said earlier, they'll start to walk around and find out if it's enough trees, enough grassland, enough water, and if not, then you're going to have to sort it very quickly. Now, similar to Prehistoric Kingdom's method of finding out how much area the dinosaurs have in their enclosures, the territory of the dinosaur will be able to be seen in the enclosure by selecting the dinosaur and a white area will be formed of where it holds the territory of that enclosure. Now, if a dinosaur's territory in that enclosure does start to decay or starts to lose sources such as food and water, it will start to look for other areas in the enclosure to try and be more compatible with and start to trade off their old territories for new ones. The dinosaurs do in fact rest and also have many social interactions together once they are sharing the same territory. There's less back and forth between the UI where you had to open a huge system, Instead, now it's just more simpler. Herbivores will, in fact, graze and feed off natural foliage instead of just using feeders. Some dinosaurs do, in fact, require better foliage than others as well, similar to the paleobotany technique from Evolution 1. Here's some good news as well. Pteranodons do break out of the aviaries, and they do fly across the park if they are agitated. Whether or not they will attack guests is still remaining as an unknown specimen right now. However, we hope that's the case. Pack hunting and normal hunting, similar to what I was saying earlier, are more dynamic. There is no stop or starts anymore. It's more of a fluent transition. There's a new building called the Paleo Medical Facility where injured and sick dinosaurs will go. If your dinosaurs do get into a fight, as confirmed, they won't always fight to the death. Some will fight until one is injured and laying on the floor, and that is when you'll call the PMF to send over a mobile vetry unit to then take over the dinosaur and care for the dinosaur. And yes, the mobile vet unit is confirmed to act if an in injured or sick dinosaur can't go into the facility. Basically, if it's a really big dinosaur that can't go to a facility. There are new buildings called ranger posts that you can put inside of the enclosures which will do welfare checks on the dinosaurs. These can be placed anywhere within the paddocks, very similar to the security camera from Jurassic Park Operation Genesis. Something else similar to JPOG, guests now have four new specific type of preferences Adventure, Standard, Nature, and Luxury. When it comes to adventure, we know that the guests will be looking more for dinosaurs that can inflict pain and are carnivorous. For the luxury area, they're probably more thinking about being able to go into gyrospheres and live in the luxury life. The design of shops and attractions are completely up to you. There's more design and more customization from colors and also little bits of items popping out from the building. And you'll be able to select these colors from the color wheel. You're also able to pause time and speed up time similar to Planet Zoo and Prehistoric Kingdom. And of course, the new confirmed disaster so far is a snowstorm which I assume will act similar to the sandstorm that we saw in Jurassic World Evolution 2's announcement trailer. So that was all that was said in the article for Jurassic World Evolution 2. You can check it out entirely in a video I made previously. And the last very important thing about Jurassic World Evolution 2 are the current confirmed dinosaurs. This was also stated in the article. The dinosaurs that Andrew Rayner saw in his 30 minute preview were as follows. Acrocanthosaurus, Allosaurus, Amargosaurus, Ankylosaurus, Baryonyx, Brachiosaurus, Camarasaurus, Nasutoceratops, Pteranodon, Stegosaurus, Triceratops, and Tyrannosaurus rex. Jumping on top of that, we know that Coelophysis and Mosasaurus can be also added to the roster of Evolution 2. Soon after the article, we got a somewhat interview type of thing for Evolution 2 where the Amargosaurus was finally revealed in a species field guide. In the species field guide, we can see loads of different skin patterns and colors, and we can also see the Brachiosaurus go into greys at the top of a treetop. Not much information followed until yesterday we got the Brachiosaurus species field guide where it sums up what the Brachiosaurus really is, but we also got a little bit more information regarding it that the T-Rex and probably other carnivorous dinosaurs of its size can hunt down Brachiosauruses and kill them. Unfortunately, in Evolution 1, it was just the Indominus Rex that could do that, but now it seems like other large theropods are able to take down Brachiosauruses and other sauropods. And also, Brachiosauruses are able to fight for territorial reasons, so I'm intrigued to see how that's going to work. But that does in fact round up all of the information we got between June 10th 
and June 30th of 2021 for Evolution 2. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to smash that like button and also subscribe if you are new and let me know your thoughts of all of the news in the comment section down below. But in the meantime, stay safe out there and I hope to see you all in the next one. Bye bye. Hello, hi, you, did you enjoy the video? Just a little reminder to press that like button and also subscribe. I just want to thank my Patreons for this month on screen right here as giving me that little extra support really does go a long way. But anyways, I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day.